Hey there, and good morning, everybody. Pastor Sven here from Gateway of Hope. And uh, I know I had mentioned I was not going to do a live video this morning, but really have been um, kind of inspired by my sister, Debbie, uh, who I saw one of her live videos the other day, and she said uh, consistency is kind of a very important thing for her, and so I'm going to do my best to be consistent as well. And if I'm able to do a video, well, then I ought to go ahead and do this video for you. Uh, we're trying to read through the entire New Testament in 90 days. And I want to just maybe share with you each day a little bit of what Holy Spirit is showing me in the scripture from that. Hey there, good morning, Santos. Good morning, Pastor Spencer there in the Philippines. Hey, good morning, Pastor Timothy down in Lake Jackson. Been praying for you. And Rose, believe in the Lord uh, to get you out of that hospital and get you home. Uh, this weekend. Anyway, I just want to take a few minutes to share with you a couple of things. Uh, if you are uh, on the 90-day reading plan, then uh, which uh, again, we can email you a copy of, uh, you should be on Matthew uh, 23 through 25 today. Now, uh, early on uh, through the book of Matthew, we've built in some places where you will be reading the same chapter twice, and that's so that people can catch up with us and um, uh, but you'll notice that that will go away here uh, starting once we get to the book of Mark. So if you haven't begun reading with us, uh, then please go ahead and pick up your Bible, read three, four chapters a day, and you will catch up with us very quickly. And then you can continue this journey through the New Testament with us. Uh, we've only been in this for about uh, two weeks. And um, even though I've done uh, the 90 day plans many, many times myself, each time that I do, um, and they, they just end up changing your life because uh, it really opens your, uh, your spirit up to hearing the voice of God. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. We are people of the word, and we need to invest some time in hearing the word. All right, well, I don't want to preach to you this morning. I just want to take a few minutes to share with you from the scripture um, uh, a couple of thoughts. Actually, before I do that, let me just say one more thing. Uh, for those who were not at Gateway of Hope last night, um, I would strongly encourage you to go and pull the video down on the YouTube or Facebook page from last night. Uh, Paco did a great job. I uh, was very pleased with that. And he went through the Lord's Prayer, and we looked at the Lord's Prayer in Aramaic, which of course is the language in which it was originally prayed, and looking to see what those words all mean there. And uh, uh, there is uh, there's some real richness when we do word studies like that, so I'd encourage you to do that. All right, Matthew chapter uh, 25. Uh, yesterday, I shared with you for just a few minutes on don't be uh, too quiet and don't be too loud, uh, just serve. Uh, and Jesus was making the point that, uh, number one, you shouldn't let anybody stop you in your praise for him and Whatever he whis whatever you hear him whisper in your ear, the book of Matthew chapter 12 says, shout it from the rooftops. And, and so don't be quiet. The enemy would love nothing more than to silence your mouth because life and death is in the power of the tongue. Uh, but uh, then we come right next to, uh, to the passage where it also says, don't be so loud. Serve humbly. Uh, uh, we see where Jesus was riding into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey. And we learn of the culture of the kingdom 
is servanthood and humility. And it is a lesson which the church has lost to a large degree because we're so enamored with our titles and with our anointings and with our giftings and, and prophet this and apostle that and pastor this and look at me and I've got that. When really, hey Scott, hey Jeff, uh, when really what we should be about is about serving. And this morning, Jesus makes much of the same point again because uh, the kingdom is all about serving. And we come to this passage of scripture in Matthew, the 25th chapter, where uh, we have the parable of the three servants. And again, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by a story of a man going on a long trip. He called together his servants and entrusted his money to them while he was gone. He gave uh, he gave five bags of silver to one, two bags of silver to another, and one bag of silver to the last, dividing it in proportion to their abilities. And he then left them. He, and then he left them and went on his trip. The servant who received five bags of silver began to invest the money and earn five more. The servant with two bags of silver also went to work and earned two more. But the servant who received the one bag of silver dug a hole around, uh, dug a hole in the ground, and hid the master's money. And after a long time, the master returned from his trip and called them to give account of how they had used what he had given them. The, mass, the, the servant to whom he had entrusted the five bags of silver came forward with five more and said, Master, you gave me five bags of silver to invest, and I have earned you five more. The master was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been given, you've been faithful in handling this small amount, so now I will give you many more responsibilities. Come, let us celebrate together. Hey, good morning, Hovita. How are you doing, Mama? It's good to see you. The servant who had received the two bags of silver came forward and said, Master, you gave me two bags of silver to invest, and I have earned you two more. The master said, Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount, so now I will give you many more responsibilities. Come and let us celebrate together. Then the servant with the one bag of silver came and said, Master, I knew you were a harsh man. Harvesting crops you didn't plant and gathering crops you didn't cultivate. I was afraid I would lose your money, so I hid it in the earth. Look, here is your money back. And the master replied, you wicked and lazy servant. If you knew that I harvested crops where I didn't plant and gathered crops I didn't cultivate, why didn't you at least deposit my money in the bank? Uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, at least I could have gotten some interest. Then he ordered, take the money from the servant and give it to the one with the 10 bags of silver. To those who use well what they are given, even more will be given and they will have abundance. But from those who do nothing, even what they have will be taken away. You know, I've always read this scripture and I thought, man, this is such a harsh scripture. But actually there is a very important point that Jesus is making. The anointing that I give you, you are to use and to invest. Too many people take their giftings, their abilities, their, their talents, if you will, as the King James puts it, and they hide them. They stick them in the ground. They hoard them for themselves. They take the words which God gives them, and they hoard it to themselves, committing spiritual gluttony. They show up in church on Sundays, feed me, feed me, feed me, feed me, give me, give me, give me, give me. And very little time is being spent in actually taking what the King has given and pouring it into the lives of others. You see, the culture of the kingdom requires you to take that which you are given, that which you are equipped with when you are in the word, when you are chewing on the meat of the word, when you hear him speak. He wants you to take that and not just hoard it for yourself. It is to be invested into the lives of others. So well, where do you get that, Pastor? Uh, go on with me and look at the following passage, because sometimes, again, as I've said often, we we take verses and we pull them out of their context. But the passage in the early part of chapter 25 can only be understood in light of the latter half of chapter 25, because it's one complete statement. He says, but when the Son of Man shall come, this is verse 31, in all of his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne and all the nations will be gathered in his presence and he will separate the people as shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he will place the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. We're all familiar with this. And the king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed my father, by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was stranger. I was a stranger and you invited me into your home. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you cared for me. I was in prison and you visited me. 
And the righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry or feed you or thirsty and give you some to drink or a stranger and show you hospitality or naked and gave you clothing? When did we see you in sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will say, I'll tell you the truth. When you did it to the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. And then, of course, we know that he looks to the ones on the left, the ones that he refers to as goats. And he says, you didn't do any of these things to me. And they'll say, well, when did we not? When you did not do it for the least of these. You see, the things that God gives us are to be invested. Jesus said, you'll know a tree by its fruit. The way I look at it is, by your works, I'll know whether or not you are a disciple. No, we are not saved by works. No, our works do not gain us entrance into the kingdom of heaven. It is by faith and faith alone. But my works will testify of who I am and of what uh, has happened in my life. Uh, the Apostle Paul, writing to the Corinthian church, really messed a bunch of people, said, If any man is in Christ, behold, he's a new creation. Old things pass away and everything becomes new. And my friend, one of the things that becomes new is the things you will do. Let me tell you, when we allow Jesus to work in our lives, then we will begin to do the same things that Jesus did. And when we do the same things that Jesus did and speak the same words that Jesus spoke, we will see the same results that Jesus saw. And what did Jesus do? He loved on people. He served them. He blessed them. He comforted them. He had compassion on them. So today, I would challenge you, my friend, that thing which God has given you, even the, maybe this word that God is speaking to you today through this video, I would just encourage you, take what you hear from heaven and pour it into the lives of others, because by this will all men know that you are my disciples, in that you have love one for another. By this, men will know you, by their fruit. So I challenge you today, go and invest in the lives of others. What God has invested in you, I want you to go and find someone, invest in them, and produce one or two or 10 or 20 or many, many more disciples. Go invest your life in the lives of others so that the kingdom is expanded, so that his kingdom comes and his will is done on earth as it is in heaven. Isn't that good? That's my challenge for you today. That's what I believe Holy Spirit is speaking. Let us go take the culture of the kingdom and let us go serve today into the lives of many others. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, that you have called us to be servants. And so, Father, I pray that you will show us each and every time where we are to invest, Lord, that which you have given to us. Lord, we want to bring a kingdom investment, Lord, on the anointing that you have placed upon our lives. We want to use our talents, our giftings, our abilities, Lord, for you. The words, the rhema words which you speak, Lord, we don't want to just hoard for ourselves, but Father, rather we want to give that and invest that into the lives of others. Show us today where to invest, Lord, where, Father, your kingdom will be expanded into hearts and lives. Show us, Lord, where there is good, fertile ground ready for the seed of the word of God to be planted. Father, go with us today. Use us today. And Father, again, we stand in agreement, Lord, with my brother Elisha in India, believing you, Lord, for favor for that land on that, for that orphanage. Lord, I thank you that you cause him to have divine favor, Lord. Even today, Lord, he will have an, uh, he will have an encounter with that land, Lord. Father, where favor will be extended. Lord, we continue to believe you, Lord, for Rose. We're not begging you for healing, Lord. We stand in faith, in confidence, knowing by his stripes she is healed. So, Lord, I thank you for that. I thank you that, Lord, her body lines up with the truth of God's word. Father, today, use us, speak through us, and bless the kingdom through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I love these videos. I love spending time with you. Be in prayer. Uh, continue to pray and believe the Lord for Rose. Continue to believe the Lord for kingdom expansion here in Houston, in the Philippines, in Cagayan de Oro, in Manila. Yes, I believe the Lord has a big plan for Manila. And Pastor Val, if you see this video, then know that I am praying and believing the Lord for a, a kingdom explosion there in FICM in Manila. And I'm looking forward to working with you this coming year. Uh, be praying our website. Uh, uh, Pastor uh, James uh, Hughes down in Sydney and the great folks at Dove Gospel. 
uh, are currently at work on the GOH website and we'll be launching that soon. Uh, so lots of things to be praying for. And of course, let's be praying for our service this coming Sunday as we minister on the parable of the seed and the sower. Anyway, go make it a great Thursday. Go bless somebody today. Go love somebody today. I'm getting ready to head out of here with Jay. We're going to the Social Security office. Until I see you tomorrow, I love you. Remember, our worship's never over. Our service is just beginning. Go be the people of God. Love you and bye-bye.